The Grey Lady. Have you guys ever heard of The Grey Lady? I remember hearing some campfire stories of her when I was a kid, but I haven't been able to find much information about her. Here's what I remember. Supposedly people see her in remote places, mountaintops, deep forests, uh, out in the country. She appears to be an old, very tall, thin woman, and she wears a long gray dress. People report seeing her during times of great physical duress, usually when the witness believes himself to be close to death and almost exclusively when the witness is alone in the situation. They say she always has this big smile. I found this story online a few years ago about a hiker who got lost in British Columbia and saw her. Everything is true here, but I kind of hope this isn't. I'd already been out there for about four days, doing some off-trail hiking, and I had a great time. I used to love going out to the woods by myself. I liked the solitude. I must have gotten turned around. I didn't end up back where I wanted to be at what was supposed to be the end of my trip. I later found out that I had been going in the almost complete opposite direction of my car. It was about three days after I was supposed to be home. I was just trying to get out of there when I started to see things. Just on the edge of my vision, shadows, I, I'd look and there'd be nothing there. At night I would hear noises outside my tent. At first I thought it was just animals and I'm sure some of the sounds were, but others... I heard scratching and sometimes late at night I'd wake up to hearing breathing. Not like any animal, I'd, I'd call out thinking that maybe someone was there, but I'd never get an answer. This went on for a few days. I thought maybe it was just the woods getting to me. You hear horror stories about hunters who get lost and start hallucinating, or who die of thirst with water in their packs. The forest can mess with you, but about a week after I got lost, I... I saw her off in the distance, maybe 200 yards, hands at her side, and she was tall, six or seven feet, with her head craned downwards, like she was deformed or something, but she was still looking at me. She wore this dirty dress that hung down to the ground. I called out, but she still didn't do or say anything, I started running towards her. I was scared, but by then I was worried that I wasn't going to make it out of the woods. I got maybe a hundred feet, but she stepped behind a tree, and when I got up there, I was just alone. I don't know where she could have gone. The next couple of days I didn't see anything, and the nights were quiet. I just kept following the creek, hoping to find something, anything. I ran out of food on the tenth day, and that night I woke up, not sure what time it was, to, uh, to laughing outside. <laughs> a low giggle. It lasted for a few seconds. Had I dreamed it? I opened the flap of my tent and called out, but all I could hear was the sound of running water, which was strange. There should have been bugs, deer, wind, something, but it was just so quiet. Then a loud snap from about 20 feet away. I shined my flashlight and I saw her there, half hidden, poking out from behind a tree, grinning at me. I got a better look at her than I did before. She was old. Her hair was done up in a bun, and her face was distorted. Her nose was too long and crooked and her eyes were too close together, too big, black. We stared at each other for a long time and when I called out to her, her grin just got wider. I just sat there, frozen, looking at her. I yelled again. I asked her what she wanted and she just laughed. This scratchy, painful laugh. Then she stepped out of the light and I couldn't find her again. The rest of the night I heard things outside. Even the constant bubbling of the creek scared me. I wanted out. I was hungry, exhausted, and scared for my life. I truly believed that I was going to die in these woods. At first light, I set out, walking as fast as I could away from the campsite. Sometimes in the late afternoon, I came across an old logging road. It didn't look like it had been used in years, and I knew that it didn't mean that I was safe yet, but still... Seeing that sign of humanity, it was the happiest moment of my life. It was getting dark, and I felt like I was going to pass out, but I didn't want to stop. I don't think that I could have slept anyways. Somehow I found the energy to keep going. About two hours after I started following the road, it was pitch black out, and it started to rain. 
I'd been lucky enough to have good enough weather for my trip, but within a few minutes it was pouring. I was plodding along as fast as I could when I heard footsteps behind me. I'd stop and listen, and they would stop too. I'd start walking, and I'd hear them again. A few times I thought I could see her, stopped not too far behind me. And more than once I heard her laughing, that disgusting laugh. It was almost dawn when I came to the top of the hill and saw lights. Lights, mankind, civilization. I practically fell down the hill, stumbling to the door of a small house. I must have looked like some kind of monster, dirty, wet, and exhausted, but they took me in. It was an old couple. They gave me some food and a bed to sleep in. I woke up and they told me that I had slept for 15 hours. I told them about the woman I saw. As nice as they were, I could tell that I was making them uncomfortable. They told me it was just the hunger, but I know what I saw, out there, deep in the woods, and I'll never forget the laughing. Confession. You okay, buddy? Yeah. You sure? You're breathing heavy. I'm okay. Good. Relax. It'll go quicker that way. To start, I just need some basic information. Basic? Simple things. Okay. Let's start with an easy one. What's your name? Roy. Roy what? Fromir. Well, Mr. Fromir, how old are you? Sixteen. You go to school? No. Why not? Don't know. Just don't. You live alone? No. You live with your mother and your brother Bill, don't you? Yeah. Good, good. You're doing fine, but now I need to ask you some harder questions, okay? Can you handle that? Yeah. Good boy. Your brother Bill's in some hot water, isn't he? He's been accused of some bad things. Accused? He did something bad to that little girl, Jenny Connor. Oh. To be frank, Mr. Fromir, I think you might know something about that. That's why you're here today. I think you have a story about Bill and that little girl. I... Don't be shy. I... 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 Relax. You aren't in any trouble. Just answer me one question. Did you see Bill and Jenny go into the woods? I didn't see them. Really? I saw Jenny. Bill was home. You say you saw Jenny go into the woods, but Bill was at home? Yeah. Mr. Fromir, I find that a wee bit hard to believe. You know, we found Bill's jacket in those woods. We found his jacket soaked in about a pint of blood, Jenny's blood. And we found her too. Funny enough, she was just a few yards away. We took some pictures. You want to see them? Pictures? Of the body. You want to see them? No. No, I expect you don't. They're not pretty. But nevertheless, they beg the question. What was Jenny's blood doing on Bill's jacket? And why do a dozen witnesses claim to have seen them leave together from the football game? Witnesses? Mr. Fromir, I know you followed them from the field. We have it on CCTV. So I ask you again. Did you see Bill take Jenny into the woods? I... Did you? Uh... I didn't. I think you're lying. Bill was home. We go together from football where Bill said, take Jenny home. You took Jenny? It was cold. Uh, Bill said, take Jenny and take my jacket. Uh, I said, let's go to the woods. Jenny said no. And it made me mad. And, uh, I pushed her. She hurt her head. What? I hit her in the woods. I was scared. I didn't want trouble. She woke up. She was mad and screaming, so I hit her. I hit her so she shut up. Um, and the jacket? Jacket. Bill's jacket. I hit it. Where? Under my bed? Christ, no, not under your bed. Think, for once in your life, fucking think. You hit it in the woods. And I hit it in the woods. Yeah, don't forget, it's important. Sorry. When they ask for real, you have to remember. I'm sorry for yelling, I hate seeing you made a fool of is all. I know, Bill. That concludes this week's session at the Nightmare Lab. If you enjoyed this episode, click the like button and comment below. If you have your own twisted tale that you'd like narrated on our channel, submit it through the form in the description. 
Become a part of our sinister collective by subscribing. Be here next week for another concoction to feed the nightmare.